In this video, we're going to cover Panda 3DS for the Xbox Series X and S. After the demise of Citra, Panda 3DS is one of the forks that cropped up that continued on with its legacy. A port of Panda 3DS has been made available for UWP for Xbox Series X and S, and as of making this video, it really doesn't play much. So right now, this is more of a curiosity than an actual usable thing, but let's go ahead and dive into setup. Now to get started, you are going to need an Xbox Series X or S that is signed up for developer mode. So if you haven't gotten your Xbox set up for dev mode, I will have a link in the description below to my dev mode setup guide. And this covers how to get set up for dev mode as well as getting RetroArch installed if you'd like to do more emulation. You will also need to have a USB drive of some variety, be it a flash drive, hard drive, or SSD to store your 3DS games on, and you need to have that set up in the proper format, and again, that is covered in this video. So once again, link in the description below. But now let's go ahead and get Panda 3DS downloaded for our consoles. So we're going to head over to the dev store, link in the description below, and we're just going to scroll down here to the emulator section until we find Panda 3DS, and we're just going to click on the download button. Now just get your Xbox booted up into dev mode, make sure it's hooked up to the same network as your computer, and make note of that remote access IP address as we will need it in just a second. But with Panda 3DS downloaded, just go ahead and get it extracted. And once extracted, you will see that we have our main Panda 3DS program. This could be an M6 or AppX, just depending on when you download this. And then we also have a few dependency files. If in any time in the future you are watching this video and you only get like an AppX or M6, that's all you need to use. If there's no dependencies anymore, you don't need to use them. But for this video, we've got the whole slew of things, so very good. So go ahead and open up a web browser and get that remote access IP address typed in so you can get to your Xbox device portal. Once on your Xbox device portal under My Games and Apps, just click on Add, and then you can drag your Panda 3DS app into this box here, click on Choose File, and navigate to the folder where you have it stored, and then just select it. Now under Next, we could drag our dependencies into the box, or we could just select them one at a time with the Choose File box. And if for any reason you select them and it doesn't add them below here, just refresh your web browser and it usually fixes it. But once everything's selected, just go ahead and tell it to start. And done. So we are now finished with the Xbox device portal. We don't need this anymore for today's video. But now over on the Xbox, let's go ahead and finish up our Panda 3DS setup. So we're just going to scroll down to it and use our view button to go down to view details, and we're gonna change the UWP type from app to game, if you don't already have this defaulted in the Xbox device portal. And then I always like to do a restart after that. Just my thing. And with that restart, let's go ahead and get our 3DS game set up. So over on my channel, I have a guide for backing up your physical collection of 3DS games and DLCs. So if you have a large physical collection and you're interested in this and have a modded 3DS, like this is going to take care of you for getting those backed up to use on your Xbox. But again, most games actually aren't working on Xbox at the moment, so uh, this will get you prepared for the future, I guess. But link to this will be in the description below. Otherwise, you can resort to the Googles, but as always, illegal download links are not provided on this channel. But once you have your 3DS game sourced, they need to be in either .3DS or .CCI format. So you can see I have them both here. So the new Azahar emulator requires you to rename .3DS to .CCI. I haven't exactly done that yet, but uh, .3DS still works on Panda 3DS for the time being. So that is usable. But anyway, our 3DS games just need to be put onto the root of our Xbox USB drive as of this current build. We cannot manually select a game location yet. So we're just gonna take all of our games and we're just gonna move them onto the root of our Xbox USB drive. And with those games in place, we're ready to take our drive and move it over to the Xbox. All right, so now over on the Xbox, we can go ahead and launch into Panda 3DS for the first time. And you might get a notice about an update being available, so you could just press A on yes for this. And then once it says that the update's successful, you could just quit out of it. And then load it back up. 
And for this video, it will bring you to the Panda 3DS main menu, and you'll just see a list of all of your games right here. And so to begin playing a game, you can just press A on it and it will boot it up. And this is where you will see just where uh, the faults start appearing with this current build. As you can see, the screen is shifted all the way to the left, not centered, and it is glitchy as none other. So not exactly a playable experience here for Samus Returns. At least not yet. But anyway, a nice feature of Panda 3DS is that if you press the view and menu buttons, it will bring up a little menu here and you could just tell it to quit back to the main menu. Now it is worth noting that if you quit out of a game and try to load another one, there's a good chance that the emulator will crash in this current build. Not always the case, but it can happen. But anyway, let's go ahead and check out a few of the settings that Panda 3DS offers us as of this current build that you might be interested in. So pressing A on settings. First off, general tab, we're not gonna mess with anything in here. Window, we're not really gonna mess with anything in here either. GPU, again, not really gonna mess with anything. Audio, so this is the one that we will mess with. If you want to have audio for your 3DS emulation, check mark the enable audio option. But do note, because the emulation is not full speed and is not exactly the greatest, it's just not going to sound great in most things either. It's going to be crackly, it's going to be off, slow, it's just a, it's an alpha level emulator. But in the Xbox specific settings here, you could show debug info, stretch the window, but under the GL backend, there's two options in here. There's desktop GL and open GLES. You could try changing between these two, see if there's any performance gains. I didn't notice any, but the option's there. And then there's this dev store tab where you can enter in a secret key and enable cloud saves, but I'm not really gonna bother with any of that because this emulator doesn't exactly present playable results as of right now. Perhaps in the future. But yeah, that's essentially it to getting your 3DS games on Panda 3DS for Xbox Series X and S. Again, it's not exactly a usable thing right now, but it's here and you can mess with it and see what you would consider playable. But we're gonna go ahead and call it for this one. We'll be revisiting Panda 3DS in the future when it becomes a bit more usable because this really is a promising start. But thank you so much for watching. I hope this video has satisfied your curiosity about 3DS emulation through Xbox Series X and S with the Panda 3DS emulator. But here at the end, just the usual favors to ask. If you haven't already, thumbs up, thumbs down, depending on how much you like today's video. And please do hit that sub button and notification bell so you can see when new videos go live on the channel. Loads always coming your way and I'd love to have each and every one of you along for the ride. For anyone interested in further helping support the channel and keep it going, please consider hitting that join button here on YouTube or that Patreon link in the bottom right hand corner of the screen, as every little bit helps keep us going and bringing more videos just like this to all of you. As an added bonus, you also get early access to all these videos and get to vote on our weekly retro reviews. Big shout out to all of our current backers, could not do it without you, just super grateful for all of you. But until next time, my wonderful internet peeps, you all stay awesome, keep on gaming, and we'll see you back next video.